Welcome to Season 2 of the Craft Beer Connoisseurs Podcast. I'm Tyler. If you're new to the podcast, we are three friends and a producer who like to showcase craft breweries and their beers. Also, we like to end every episode with a short conversation on a variety of different topics. If you're not new to the podcast, well, welcome back. We will keep things similar to Season 1. After all, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Whether you're new or returning, please feel free to listen to all of our Season 1 content. And remember... To follow us on Instagram at Craft Beer Cons, send a friend request on Untapped or subscribe on YouTube at Craft Beer Connoisseurs. Also drop a comment, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Now for today's episode. Welcome to the Craft Beer Connoisseurs. I'm Tyler. I'm Chris. And I'm Brett. And along with us today, producer Santa. Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. (laughs) <laughs> not even from the belly. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, in today's episode, we'll be reviewing Wishbone Brewing Company, which is in Waterford, Ontario. Yes. And Santa and ourselves are going to enjoy two beers today. Uh, the first is Jam Ban, which is a blackberry sour. Mm-hmm. And the second one is Whatever Floats Your Goat, which is a Dunkelsbach. And that's the first one we've ever had in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. And to wrap up the episode, we will discuss some of our first jobs growing up and a couple other 2021 stocking stuffers. All right, and we are back. So Wishbone is located at 80 Alice Street, Unit 2 in Waterford. It's next to an antique market, which is the, in the heart of the downtown core. I mean, The downtown core for Waterford. Yeah, relatively speaking, right? (laughs) Yeah. It's on the uh, Waterford Heritage Trail. That is 2,000 square feet. Uh, The brewery has opened its doors five months ago, so that was July 23rd, I think, was the exact exact date. The exact date. So exactly five months from the date that this episode is being released. Uh, Math adds up. Love it when it comes together. There we go. So yeah, yeah, the brewery is spearheaded by owner and good guy, Tyler Ferguson, who is- What a great name. Can we just stop there for a second? You mean Ferguson? Great last name. (laughs) Tyler, Tyler, what a great name. It's not bad. (laughs) I've seen better. Yeah. (laughs) Not as good as Chris, but I mean... Or Brett. (laughs) Or Santa. Or Santa, Santa, yeah, there you go. Santa takes the kids. Uh, So yeah, Tyler uh, is a former car car salesman, uh, and uh, he works along with the head brewer, Nick, uh, who has 10 years of home brewing experience, and he got his start uh, in kind of the commercial brewing at Folly Brewing in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And uh, both of them have a passion for home brewing and the science that goes into it. Uh, they're really interested in, in, in that science. There's yeah. a lot of science that com- goes into brewing, that is there for sure. Is. So the building was once home to the Dominion Telephone Company, and it's now been converted in to include residential suites upstairs and the brewer- brewery located on the main level. Yeah. Yeah, so why don't we maybe first talk about how most of us, at least, went to the brewery. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who all wait? Uh, I I went to the brewery. I went as well, and I know it's been a busy season. Yeah, but Santa made the opportunity to come, and he, you yes, know he, he did. Santa did. Day. He wasn't booked in at the mall that day. Didn't have to. Yeah, didn't have to worry about parking either. <laughs> no, you know because there is a nice uh, waterfront there. There is. So yeah. parked a slate. Yeah, as they say, just slid right on in. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, There's, actually, there was no snow on the ground. <laughs> no, there wasn't. <laughs> yes, I did not get the opportunity to go uh, due to you know personal reasons. Yes, personal reasons, and we'll leave it at that. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Well, yeah. So we we saw the the brewery as we mentioned. Uh, had a nice chat with both Tyler and Nick, and and got to to know about the brewery, kind of un- understand about it. So. Um, you know, we what we learned from them is very interesting about the name. So they were kind of struggling with what the name would be. Uh, they were thinking Black Bridge because I guess there's a bridge in Waterford. That's which black. Is, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is the Black Bridge, which is kind of like a, a historic landmark. Um, but then they decided that they were just going to go Ferguson Brewing, uh, just kind of keep it simple. And then a year later at Thanksgiving, Tyler and his fiance Ashley. Um, they were snapping the wishbone that was safe for them. And then the name just kind of jumped out at, at Tyler and he was like, yes, yeah, this is it. Yes. <laughs> Let's do wishbone. And he did get the larger half of the wishbone. Yeah, he was really right. adamant about telling us that. You yes. Know? I, don't know, yeah. I don't know if that was just kind of like a, Hey, Ashley, guess what? He would not tell us what his wish was though, but I think I know. <laughs> to open a brewery? <laughs> I, I, that's what I would think, but uh, cannot confirm. <laughs> so the brewery is designed to be a gathering place for locals and to give the out-of-towners, the best Falcon 
uh, experience they could have, a play on the brewery being situated in Norfolk County. Well, we did have a folk and good time. Yes. <laughs> I actually did ask uh, producer Santa to FaceTime me in, uh, but he said he didn't want to use his data. No, no. no. He, I mean, he's doing, he, he's on the road a lot this time of year, so he's using a lot of data. I think at the end of the day, too, is you have to look at the roaming charges because if right. his location where he where he is, I mean, that's cross provinces. It's a whole thing. Oh, it's, it's a nightmare. I don't know if his carrier would even allow it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so prior to the pandemic, Ferguson's homebrews were getting rave reviews from friends. Uh, which is nice to see. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the friends were actually being legit with their reviews and not just trying to boost <laughs> Not just being up. like, hey, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the idea struck him that, you know, maybe we should get into a, a craft brewery. So this is kind of where that started. We see the typical kind of story uh, with a lot of different breweries. And uh, it holds true with this as well. Yes. Yeah, so Ferguson flew down to Virginia to attend a beer accelerator program. It was here that he met with ingredient suppliers, accountants, lawyers with the knowledge of the industry, you know, plus obviously a few taste tests at some breweries because I, I feel as though <laughs> that would be to. included in that. You, you got to do that. One Absolutely. Uh, where it was much more of a deeper dive into, you know, recipe creation, the science, as we mentioned earlier, and even just having the hops in your hands and just smelling the aromas. Mm. Mm. Hmm? That, that would be good because then you could be like, oh. This hop smells like this. I would love a beer that smells like this. this. That yeah, sort sure. of thing. Yeah. So the brew house itself, uh, quite small. Uh, we we yeah. did we were able to venture in there with with Tyler. Um, we mentioned it's a two thousand square foot brewery, so they don't have a ton of space. Uh, but, but they, they utilize make, it well. They yeah, yeah, they make very good use of their space. So they have four twelve hundred liter fermenting tanks, a bright tank, a keg washer, and a commercial canning system. And the canning system is about like I don't know maybe three square feet like it takes up almost no space it's mm -hmm. actually really awesome and i think he he said they could do 70 cans an hour or something like that so yeah i think when they're really going at it it's it's a smooth operation yeah right yeah and, and so then basically they've got a walk-in cooler that accommodates up to five thousand cans and a hundred kegs and then they have the draw lines uh it's a short draw he said uh mm -hmm. to their 12 taps at the bar um but most important thing about the brewery or the brew house is the drain or the trench drain. Yeah. The selling point. Yeah. So basically when, when, uh, Nick was, I guess, being quote unquote hired, uh, by Tyler, he took a visit to the brewery and this was at the very beginning of construction. But one thing he noticed was that the trench drain was dug yeah, and he was, already there. he was very excited because when he worked at Folly, they didn't have a slope floor and there was no trench drain and he had to sweep up and clean everything. So he thought this would be a lot easier. <laughs> so he could have a lot more fun actually brewing instead of just cleaning. Cleaning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those small things that I think is just kind of funny and unique about the story is like, that's all you have there. And that's the big selling point. And he was just like, yeah. sold! Yeah, sold. yeah. You know, the trench drains here. I'm <laughs> in for sure. What, one thing that was actually really cool about the brew house too is um, they have their refrigerant on the roof of the building mm -hmm. right so it comes down and and that cools the uh the cooler cools the fridge everything like that but because like you mentioned brett the second floor of the building is residential suites yeah basically they had to put the hose i guess or the pipe the piping yep. that goes from the, the cooler on the roof to into the brewery through someone's closet yeah. So basically, someone's got <laughs> a boxed-in pipe, a, a boxed-in pipe in yeah. the closet, and they said, "Do not touch this. Yeah. Don't hammer anything into it. There's a nice box around yeah. it. Don't don't put any nails. Don't even worry this. about hanging clothes in it. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, you will ruin our brewery and if you do that. Work that into the lease agreement. Yeah, like, do, not, do, <laughs> exactly. not, do not touch it. Right. So, um, yeah, they actually they have a beautiful patio, which I think we all want to go back to uh, in the warmer weather. Yes. Uh, so it extends out into uh, not necessarily the road, but in, into that area. Yeah. Um, be it's beautiful, and they have one big garage door there that opens up. There's two, two garage them, actually. doors. Yeah, yeah. Two. Um, yeah, it's two. Yeah, that's so more than one. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Uh, <laughs> so those open up too, and you kind of increase your your footprint uh, with, with the brewery there. So yeah. So basically, Tyler was saying like in the summer, you open those two garage doors up, and it's basically like one space, right? It's almost like the inside is, is the outside, now the, the outside, outside too, yeah. which is good for capacity levels yeah. and, and open air dining, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what? beers did you guys have at the brewery since i was not there yeah we had a couple chris do you want to mention them yeah so we had carried away 
uh, which is an IPA, uh, and it just it had just won, and it still has just won, um, <laughs> the uh, the bronze medal at the Ontario Brewing Awards in the New England IPA category. Um, so yeah, definitely congratulations because that is a crowded category. It's not easy to to win an award in that category. Um, all three of us, uh, Santa, Tyler, and I, rated it a four point two five. It was really it was good, nice IPA. It was a good beer, yeah. Uh, and then we did have a, a little taster of the Gourd Vibes Only, which is a pumpkin beer. Uh, so apparently, didn't know this, but Waterford is uh, known for pumpkins and their pumpkin, pumpkin festival, festival. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. in the fall. So he said, we have to make a pumpkin beer, of course. So uh, we did try that. Uh, Santa gave it a four, Tyler 3.75, and I gave it a 3.5. But just a little taster we had. Yeah. And then there was one more that we did try as well. And this was just right out of the tank. So it wasn't yeah. carbonated and it wasn't cold it per wasn't, se. It yeah. was more room temperature. Um, and this beer is actually, this is kind of a little bit of a, a hint to everybody, or at least letting everybody know, maybe a spoiler, perhaps. It yeah. releases on the same day, I think, as the beer, this episode. So yeah. um, it is called Sugar Plum Fairy. Now, the name, actually, Nick mentioned while we were there, and it was kind of cool because we were there for this whole entire conversation. They said, well, I'm thinking maybe it's going to be the Sugar Plum Fairy. And uh, we said, yeah, that should yeah. be the name of the beer. And hopefully when this episode drops, it's still gonna, called that. <laughs> it's still <laughs> called that. So uh, it is only going to be on draft only at Wishbone, but it's so going to have to go there to get it for sure. It's supposed to release on the 22nd or 23rd. The episode releases on the 23rd. So it just kind of works out. It is a uh, plum lemongrass uh, sour. So yeah. it, um, I thought it was actually really good for not being carbonated or really cold. Yeah. You could taste the lemon in it. You could taste the plum and um, it's, also lavender as well i think was the the other uh, flavor right yeah and i was actually really happy that we got to try that i don't think i've had a beer at that early stage yet yeah. before um super so super cool opportunity it was really cool and he just grabbed some taster glasses went back and brought them back for us yes. um so yeah we're gonna have a pic of our instagram or on our instagram of it this yeah. week um it is unfortunate that it's not going to be in cans because that would be a sweet can design yeah. with the sugar plum fairy for sure and yeah. we also pitched the idea of maybe in the future doing a beer collaboration yeah but nice. uh yeah nice. so <laughs> we talked about the the tap room there and we said you know it, it does hold uh, certain individuals up to 50 um they do have some live music as well as some trivia that they uh they do and so hey i'm i'm looking forward to some of the beers that uh i got from there that yeah. somebody was courteous enough to uh, provide to me um <laughs> but anyway speaking That's of delivery, one was me you can say it. yes it's okay <laughs> yes speaking of delivery thank you for the delivery tyler yes. uh there's a free delivery of over 75 dollars or more across most of southwestern ontario if you do Want to know if they do deliver to your area? Go into their website. They have a nice little diagram in terms of where they all deliver. And it's all provided through the uh, small batch dispatch. The tap room and bottle shop hours, Thursday to Friday, 1 p.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday 11 to 10, Sunday 11 to 9. So maybe swing by and pick up some of that uh, sugar plum. Yeah, and you know what? Before we move on, I do want to make a comment that uh, your order is less than $75, so I do have to charge you a delivery fee. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to link their information on our social media so you can get a hold of their beers. Let's go on to the first one. All right, and we're back. So first off, we want to thank everyone at Wishbone for the tour. For yes, the thank you. Yes, thank you for putting up with those guys. Really most, appreciate it. Most importantly, the reason why we're here, the beers yep. uh, for today's episode. So the first one we're going to be having is called Jam Band. It is a blackberry sour, as we previously previously mentioned. It's 5.8 ABV. The IBUs are unlisted. I am excited for this beer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Let's know if you guys have beer. noticed, but in previous episodes, Tyler has stated that he's a big fan of sours. Um, so, anyway, this beer is described as being bright, tart, and with loads of blackberry, uh, and won bronze at the Ontario Brewing Awards in the Katharina, which is a fancy word for kettle, sour. <laughs> so, a kettle sour. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Another congratulations. Yeah. Come yeah. on now. Come on. Yeah, sorry, it sorry, it sorry, sorry, sorry. A kettle sour uses wheat and Pilsner malt, low, uh, has low IBUs, and with its lactic sourness, which is meant to highlight the fruit being used and not overpower it. Nice. Well, on Untapped, you can find this beer, but you can also find us... Uh, craft beer connoisseurs and the overall rating on untapped for jam band is 3.79 out of 5 with uh, just 64 check-ins but 
we mentioned this brewery is pretty new, so they all have pretty low check-in numbers. And Santa did say, as a, an award-winning beer, the check-ins will probably go up. I would anticipate that. And if Santa says it, it's got to be true. And Santa's also said that this beer was made with Idaho 7. There you go. <laughs> Santa knows everything, you know. All right. Let's grab our beer. Let's grab our glass. And let's open her up. I was just playing it safe. I was struggling to find the finger to open it up, and I didn't want to, you know, have it to go away. Didn't want to spill. All right. Well, uh, as we pour this, we'll let you know that we are drinking it out of a tulip glass today, so make sure to use your proper glassware. Also, fun fact, Chris is actually getting about 37 milliliters less yeah, looks than we like are. It. Yeah, so we uh, actually doing some research for this episode. Brett kind of noticed that on Untapped, all the can check-ins... The can said 437 milliliters in what looks to be a 473 milliliter can. Um, funny enough, we have our four cans here. All three of you guys have a 473 printed. Mine says 437 still. So you should keep the can because that's going to be a collector's item. It is a collector's item. Brand, so you might want that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I, I will keep it. On appearance, what do we get out of here, guys? Oh, look at that nice light red color. Yeah, and it's, you know, kind of hazy, certainly can't see through it. I think the best way of kind of describing this color is almost like a ruby red grapefruit. Yeah, I was going to say. The the best way. Like, it's not full-on blackberry, but it's it's got like that kind of reddish, purplish hue. Pinkish. Yeah, pinkish hue. It's almost like if you, when you mix orange juice and cranberry juice together. Yeah. Kind of that color. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't see through it, obviously. Uh, a little bit of head retention, not not too much, just a bit, just a bit on the top. But uh, you, you can definitely get the tartness, though. Of yeah. The, uh, what on the smell? Scent. Off the nose, yeah. yeah. On the scent. On the scent. And the blackberry as well. Yeah, I'm getting the blackberry on the nose as well. All right. Well, yeah. there's not much more to probably go into on this one. I and think we'll that's besides, besides drinking it, I think, <laughs> I think we should because I'm I'm excited. All for right. Us. Let's get into it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it is. It is tart. It is Very pretty tart. tart. Yes. That that one's kind of hitting me in the jowls a little yes. bit. Oh, definitely nice acidic. Yes, it is. Uh, I would say. But that blackberry is coming through, and I think it's tart up front, and then it just it mellows itself out. Yes, what that aftertaste on that right, like it's it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And um, Santa, yeah. Santa coming in, really enjoying the aftertaste here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's kind of what this is intended to do almost, right? Being a kettle sour, you get that kind of tartness up front, um, and it finishes more as that fruit flavor as you go. I feel like this is one sip in. As we move through this, we'll get more and more of that blackberry that will just keep coming out because it retain its flavor in the mouth. And I yeah. think with sours, you can't really judge it off like the acidity and the tartness that you're getting right off the hop, right? Mm-hmm. You want... <laughs> Pun intended. Um, right off the old Idaho 7. Right off the old <laughs> Idaho 7. <laughs> you, you want to have an actual nice full swallow of it and really get the aftertaste at the end to really prove if it's a good sour or a bad sour. Obviously, this is one bronze, so obviously a lot of people know it's a good sour. Yeah. And I can already tell you it's a good sour. Yeah. It is a life. good sour. And, you know, you mentioned, Tyler, the, the kettle. Uh, this certainly, you can tell that it, it's a kettle sour. Uh, right. It has that you know, kettleness. I, it's hard to describe, but you, you can basically, you can tell. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad <laughs> can tell. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell me what I can tell, but you can tell. Just wanted to make no. everyone aware. Yeah, no, it, it's a, it's a good point. And again, um, I am interested to see how this kind of plays itself out, uh, with people going through the, the whole drink. And again, Brett, you're spot on. You can't just go ahead and say one sip in, this is what it is. Yes. And the more I just kind of let sit, the, the more I'm enjoying it uh, as we move along. And I think uh, eventually later on, not to kind of dive away from this beer for a second, but there may be potentially next year wanting to experiment with different fruit flavors when it comes to the same um, jam band recipe, right? So maybe having a, a peach one or a you know strawberry one, raspberry, whatever else they can throw in there. Yeah, and that's what they were kind of talking about, whether they make the whole jam band a kettle sour series. That was a lot. Uh, <laughs> and uh i mean hey i think in a couple of years it'd be nice to see this kind of the whole band together yeah and even the way that they've designed the can they kind of set themselves up for that right because they've got the big jam band uh logo but then underneath it says blackberry and you could easily change that to 
raspberry or whatever kind of fruit you were using. Yes, because you can easily change the milliliters on the can. On the can on right, the can too, exactly. Right? So, uh, and that's one thing, too, when we look at the can art. Sorry to steal this away from you, Brett, but go ahead. Um, it almost looks like those are the wavelengths, right? Similar to us recording the podcast, we look at our inflection and, and our tone and all that. Yeah. Um, it almost seems like this is a more uh, 80s kind of style to those same, wa- same wavelengths um, as well. Yeah, and good color to it. Nice and mm-hmm. uh, kind of tie-dye color. That's very, very attractive can. Yeah. And if they ever do, do decide to hit up the LCBO, um, I think this would be a good one to start with because it's going to be one of those cans that you're going to look at like, oh. That looks interesting. I'm going to buy that because a lot of people, again, buy off what the label says, right? Yeah, true. So talking about uh, flavor profiles, Mm -hmm. should we get there? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So the top five, uh, there's only three of them listed on Untapped. So we may have to make four and five, but we can go ahead and do that. Uh, Number one, uh, Blackberry. Yeah, I'm getting it more and more. Yeah, exactly. The more that I go through it, um, the more the Blackberry kind of stands out. That's yeah. good that, you know, you guys, BBMs are getting hit up with this. Uh, number two, <laughs> sour. Yes, yeah. it definitely yeah. sour. Uh, three, tart. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're spot on so far. So four and five, what are we going to kind of go with here? Yeah, I mean, I would offer it maybe fresh. Uh, I feel like yes. maybe just because we got this again fresh, but I, 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 it's it's flavorful, but it, it feels very fresh, like it's refreshing, right? Okay, uh, that that's just me. I, I mentioned this earlier, acidic. Yeah, is Sa- where I'm coming Sa- from. Santa says acidic as well. Yeah, Chris, yourself. Yeah, I, and this is one where you know sometimes I don't always put five. Um, mm-hmm. This is one where I might not go to five personally, um, but Santa's giving a, a few options like refreshing. Uh, it's certainly refreshing it would be nice to have this in the summer on their patio that would be great mm-hmm. um smooth yes it's it's certainly smooth and crushable um it, i don't know personally whether this is crushable for me i mean i could have a couple but maybe not four or five yeah and i think maybe the intent behind that is it's it's you can go through it quickly um uh, not maybe yeah. you have like several of them but like crushable mm-hmm. is like you can drink this relatively quickly because it, it just goes down so so easy yeah, to me, like the amount of sourness and tartness that's in this, it's more of a slow drinker for me than kind of going through it quickly. But, uh, mm-hmm. but all I, the fl- I can see all the flavors and whatnot that you're looking for in a sour are there, right? Oh, totally. Okay. I yeah. think I think with my palate is that sourness and tart has now like subsided. Like I, I as I'm going mm-hmm. through it, the, I could get through it quicker because it's not as sour. I feel like the blackberry and again, um, I think blackberries are a really good fruit. Even in the winter time here, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I just have that association. I mean, Christmas is in literally a couple of days, so this is for me it, it, it a really well. good starting Christmas beer. Yeah, for sure. Right. For sure. Uh, but speaking of other people's thoughts, um, let's go to on tap. So, Chris, you have the first one. Yeah, the first one comes from Trevor G. Uh, handle is Trev underscore eighty five, and on November sixth, Trev stated, uh, "This is what I have been looking for." Sour, fruity, amazing body, and a bit of hop character. Need more. Also, groovy can. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I hope that I hope when he typed that, is he was, that's how he said it. That too. was his inflection. Also, yeah. groovy can. Yeah, killing uh, us in your Austin Powers. <laughs> so he actually gave it a four point seven five out of five. Nice, Tyler. Yeah. So Hop D, the Hop Doc, on August 29th said the following. Light blackberry and quite tart, approachable and quaffable. It is very quaffable. No, he says that. <laughs> Gr- great beer to get the day started because projects aren't going to complete themselves and give it a 3.5 out of 5. Now, the Hop Doc is a chiropractor, a beer enthusiast, and a home brewer. Interesting. Also, they have checked in over 15,500 unique beers. Wow. Now, mind you, they did get untapped 10 years ago in 2011. But I don't want to run the numbers, divide that by 365, add some leap years I'm, in there. I'm pretty sure he got untapped on his BlackBerry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Day one yeah. in it. But uh, yeah, the Hop Doctor's doing a lot there. Chiropractor, beer enthusiast, and home brewer. So yes. very nice. All right. So ratings for this beer. I'm going to start us. Um, I think as I'm getting through it, I'm getting a lot more blackberry puree, which is a lovely. Um, this is one of the better sours I've had in a long time. I'm going to give it a 4.25. Nice. Uh, I'm going to be a tiny bit lower than you. I'm going to give it a four. All right. And for myself, I'm going to give it a 4.5. Mm. Mm-hmm. So the math should be pretty easy on this one, Brett. 
Well, you got Santa? Oh, yes. Santa is coming in at a 4.25 as well. So the math should be super easy now for you. <laughs> should it be? Should be. Oh, probably because it's a 4.25. <laughs> of course it is. There you go. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on to beer number two. And we're back. So the second beer today we're going to have is called Whatever Floats Your Goat. I wanted to make a goat noise, but I don't know if I can. I thought you were going to say this beer is going to be the greatest of all time. (laughs) I was going to make a goat noise, but I don't really know what a goat goat says. (laughs) (laughs) That's what a goat says. All right. Well, thank you, Tyler. Uh, So Whatever Floats Your Goat is a Dunkelsbach, uh, and it comes in at 7% ABV. Again, no IBUs listed. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, God. <laughs> so this is, no- is noted as a multi a malty lager with nutty caramel notes and a rich, toasty sweetness. Yes. Built, built for a goat. Yes, and I feel bad because um, the uh, little preview that you guys will probably get for this episode on our Instagram page is just going to be Tyler's goat noise. Uh, anyway... <laughs> We'll see what Santa says. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, a Dunkel's Bach should be a light copper brown color presenting a creamy, persistent white head that provides a medium body with low carbonation. The hop bitterness is there to support the malt flavors, allowing the sweetness to linger on the finish. All mm. right. So, on on top, this beer has four check-ins. Yeah. So, let's, not a, let's, let's double that. Not a lot. Yeah, we will double it. Uh, but there is an average of 3.81 bottle caps out of five. So those that was four good math from Santa. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Santa. So those four people uh, enjoy it quite a bit. So before we get into this beer, why don't we give you a little history lesson? Uh, because there's not a lot of check-ins to kind of talk about this beer. So basically, the beer that we now know as Bach originated in the northern German city of Einbeck. Uh, so probably far back as like the 1400s. But by the 1600s, it was being brewed in the Munich area of southern Germany. Ger- uh, Germany <laughs> and the name Einbach was pronounced as Ein. Sorry, the name Einbeck was pronounced as Einbach in the Bavarian accent of the region, and Einbach means Billy Goat in German. So it was shortened to Bach, and the name remains with us today, as does the visual pun of goat on the label. So uh, we mentioned this is whatever floats your goat. If you get a Bach. No matter really what brewery it's from, there's going to be a goat on the label. And if it isn't on the label, if it does not exist, then that brewery does not know their beer. And you exactly. Should beer history. Right. Does not know their beer history. <laughs> Jump out of that brewery because they're doing something wrong. Right. Well, thanks for that history lesson. Oh, no problem. Appreciate that. So uh, I think, I mean, people are going to enjoy that part of the, the episode for sure. But I'm going to go grab this beer. I'm going to grab this glass and let's open her up. I can't wait to talk about the uh, label there, Brett, later on. Right. Yeah, I will do that. Chris, what glass were you pouring this one into? So we're actually drinking this out of the tulip glass again. So make sure to use your proper glassware. What are you doing over there, big guy? A lot of head? Oh, not too bad. Not bad. It did say the head had to stay persistent if you were listening to me. In terms of what a Bach does. Well, there you go. <laughs> so on the head here, it's more of a uh, tighter kind of bubble uh, carbonation. It is more, I would almost say like frothy kind of a head, right? It is frothy. Almost almost kind of what you would expect from a stout a would, little bit. Would some say a creamy, persistent head? Yeah. Yeah, almost yes. like an ice cap, I would think. You know, just kind of like that, I wasn't going to go that, that route, but that, okay. That kind of frothiness, if you will. Um, the color, what do we got? We got that kind of multi caramel uh, like deep color, um, with a little bit of a red hinge or a yeah, there's a little bit of a red, red hinge to it. Yeah. yeah a li- sure. a yeah. little, maybe mahogany. Ooh, Ooh, rich mahogany. Yeah. Does it smell like rich mahogany? Not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just bark twice if you're in Milwaukee currently. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So on the smell there, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's that kind of, I don't know, traditional Bach, German kind of beer, um, multi on the nose as well, I feel like. And maybe like a, a, a deep caramel, almost, maybe I'm picking up maybe like 
I don't want to say burnt caramel, but but something along well, those lines. Well, there's deep caramel, there's burnt caramel, there's salted caramel, and there's where there's original caramel. And where, <laughs> and where do you fit? Somewhere between the salted and Werther's. Sounds like Brett is a caramel connoisseur. Um, so yeah, I, on, on the nose, like I'm not really sure exactly how to describe what I'm smelling. To be honest, I'm not sure what it is that I'm getting. It's beer. Um, You're smelling beer. Well, it is beer. Um, Are you getting uh, any kind of like bready notes to it? I think it is bready. Yeah. I, I think it maybe like the yeast is coming through quite a bit. I don't know. Um, but I'm certainly not getting caramel on the nose, okay. personally. Well, how about we taste it, and let's see if you get that. All right, let's do that. Let's so you do just it. jump in there, see what you guys do. I'm going to sit back and see what the facial expressions come from this vlog. Pretty standard. Nothing special. Okay. No, that's actually pretty good. I think you get... It's kind of like a, a very, a very, very malty lager. And I'm a little bit on the back end, like getting the more uh, brightiness almost on the back end. Yeah, you know what? There... Like I said, I wasn't getting any caramel on the nose. I am getting it on the swallow. Uh, <laughs> um, call that. I love how that's a term now. Yeah, yeah we, we've incorporated that. Uh, so I would say, you know, it being honest, this really didn't smell very good to me. Um, it tastes a lot better than it smells. Yeah, and this okay. is so. This is the first. This is the first block on the episode, as we've mentioned before. So, mm-hmm. um, on the podcast, not this episode. Well, well first, sorry, bo- yeah. first block on the episode. Well, too. Both. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks for the point of clarification. So, yeah, on the podcast. Um, so this is this is nice for us to have. We've had a couple blocks outside of the podcast, so this is good to have one on the podcast to kind of again understand um, and and help our listeners kind of get a feel for what the box are this is a winter style beer in my opinion yeah. again being the kind of the darker in color it's one you can sit back put on uh, national lampoon's christmas vacation uh the christmas trees lit up behind christmas us with here. the cranks actually but i get your point yeah so the christmas tree <laughs> is lit up behind us here so we are ready for christmas as i say in a couple of days but on the 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 flavor of it i kind of i'm getting still that caramel is coming through um, there are some birdiness notes, and I don't know if that's just coming from the malt aspect of it, or mm-hmm. or that's kind of coming from. But it's not overly malty. I thought it would be. I thought it'd be more, to be honest. I thought it'd be pushing uh, like this heavy malt forward kind of beer. Yeah. Um, but it 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 does kind of. Um, it's more subdued, I suppose, is the best way of putting it. The, the one thing I will say is that it drinks a lot lighter than the seven percent that it's advertised to be. Mm. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Very good point. Mm-hmm. Um, which definitely doesn't make it crushable, but it, it's almost that dangerous crushable category, if you know what I mean, right? Like it's crushable in the sense that when you drink it, you're not saying you, you're not. It's not hitting you like, oh, this is a seven percent, so you might be able to right. get through it easier. And mm-hmm. then you're like, oh. That was the seven <laughs> percent, and I think because it's yeah, it, it, that's a good point. I think that it's not overly boozy, mm-hmm. which is good, and I think that some of that booziness is actually kind of could hide behind the flavor profile of the actual beer. So, yeah, I, I think that seven percent is kind of like incognito, which is which is mm-hmm. nice. So, um, talk about that can, kid. Oh yes. So this is a very very interesting can art. Okay, so it definitely plays into the title of it of whatever floats your goat. So it's a goat's head. With a buoy attached around to it, trying to float on water. Their can art is great. That, that, I like mean, that is, there's no other way that, to describe that it. Is that spot is spot on. And you, obviously, you'll see that on our Instagram page, but it's just like, damn, whoever their uh, label maker, like, does their uh, label design, well done. So it's, it's funny you mentioned this, and Chris, correct me, Santa, correct me if I'm wrong on this one. Uh, but if I recall from our conversation with Tyler, is the individual who actually does all their can art is the same individual that did uh, the design of the, the brewery itself. Yes. And um, again, when we look at the brewery, it's very, it's a very kind of modern, very clean. It's the contrast in the white color versus the, the orange logo. Yeah. Uh, again, very simple, clean logo. We see that in the can art as well. Um, so yeah, the designer that did both good on you. Uh, you, you've, you've done a great job. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Do we well, all have 473 milliliters now that we're kind of yes, looking at it? I, I just want to make sure we're, I, I, I do. Does not look like there was okay. a typo on this. Can. I do believe though that, uh, Tyler, uh, you only had like the very first one canned or 10. I don't on know. The I, on the bottom, it says zero one. So for the purpose, just favorite number. Purpose of this conversation is, uh, I'm going to go with yeah. It's probably the first one off the line. Well, which is probably untrue, but still probably untrue. Get uh, to the flavor profiles. Yeah. So <laughs> when we talk about the flavor profiles, there's actually none on on top because there's only been four check ins. So we kind of get to do this ourselves. So uh, Santa's kind of 
populated a list for us. So maybe and he has can... checked it twice. <laughs> Very nice. Let's find out if it's multi and nice. Ooh, oh, there it is. So let's let's go through what he has. Uh, so number one, he put his multi. Oh my gosh, what are the odds? <laughs> I was wondering if a flavor profile on uh, on tap was going to be nice. You know what? <laughs> I, I I really hope that Santa can reconsider the name of his next batch of reindeers, and we can go with the uh, top five flavor profiles as reindeer names. You know what? So multi hoppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. So, yeah. fire it out, Chris. What we got? All right, so, the number one. They're, that's the lead uh, reindeer. Yeah, here. so malty, caramel, yep. smooth, bready, sweet, and light. So that's actually six. Um, yeah. But uh, I would agree with uh, maybe not that order, but definitely getting caramel. I would say it's definitely sweet, uh, light in the sense that it doesn't drink like a seven percent, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, Brett. And it is pretty smooth. And then you know a little malty at the end and. and and a little bready at the end too as well. There you go. Yeah. So on multi, on caramel, on smooth and bready, on sweet and on light, let's see what the untap users think. Uh, Brett, what <laughs> yeah. do you got? Good rhyming. Uh, <laughs> so obviously there's been actual no you know, written reviews. They just had the ratings. So uh, Julia P rated a 3.5, Blake D a 3.5, Ray G rated a 4.25, also, a very unique check-in, the Norwich parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we do not condone drinking and driving or flying a sleigh and driving? No. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And Nicholas H rated a 3.5, and it looked like his baby was very interested in being in the picture. Um, so if you do, by all means, see the untapped and go through who is all uh, rated the beer, uh, you'll see both the goat and the baby in the picture. <laughs> there you all, go. all right well uh in terms of our ratings uh i'll get us started so out of five bottle caps i'm gonna give this a 3.25 um i think this was done well for the style it's just not necessarily the style that i really like That's when, when i started uh or no, when i started when i found out we were gonna have this beer i was like uh oh, might be a low rated one i'm actually surprised at how high i'm gonna rate this mm-hmm. uh i'm giving it a four well good for myself, I'm going to give it a 3.5, so right around the average mark for myself. And producer Santa, because I missed him last time, is giving it a 3.75. Chris, what do we got? So that gives us an overall of 6.2, or sorry, 3.625. Uh, and what we're going to do with that is we're going to round it up to 3.75. That 7% really got you, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that concludes the review of Wishbone and the beers provided. And again, thank you for hosting these three guys uh, because, well, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. So, coming up, we're going to have a discussion on our first jobs growing up and a bit of extra talk to talk about. All right, as always, we have a theme conversation for everybody, and naturally it's inspired by Wishbone Brewing Company. So an interesting connection we kind of discovered prior to my arrival at Wishbone. This is pretty interesting, actually. Thank you so much. So during the research for the episode, (laughs) uh, well, Tyler's fiance, baby, sat my fiance, so it's a Tyler fiance squared connection. So as interesting that that is, I, I showed up, I said, hey, Tyler... You and I have a connection. He's like, what the hell could this be? He's like, oh, Must great. Be the names. I don't, I don't want to be connected to this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants sure. to be. <laughs> for sure. Unless you're a wet horse blanket. But uh, even then. <laughs> then I said, yeah, actually, your fiance, Ashley, she babysat my fiance, Sarah. So um, that is the inspiration for today's episode. So we are looking at what were some of our very first jobs, whether it's a high school job or anything, maybe even before high school, if you got into it. So um, let's do a little bit of a round table as we do. Uh, Brett keeps looking at me from my right side. So I think he feels like a eager. He's beaver. excited. I was just looking at you talking. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you want to go first? Brett? Go ahead. Uh, sure. Why not? Right, so buddy. I got my first job when I was uh, 16, actually. I was a dishwasher for three and a half weeks at the Rosen Crown of Mitchell. <laughs> and I found out that I did not want to dishwash. Okay. I mean, really, if you want my first job, I was at the Rosen Crown when I was seven, challenging drunk guys at pool at nine o'clock on a Friday night, winning five bucks a time. But, I mean... All right, hey. you're a hustler. Yes. I mean, my whole family worked there at one time. Anyway, uh, I also umpired as well. Yeah. Um, you know, because they're... Anybody out there? 
There's good money in umpire. There is. <laughs> there's good money in it, actually. But it's, and it's, it's all hard cash. to find good umpiring. <laughs> yes. Like yourself. Strike two on a strike three apparently is frowned upon. Yeah, don't run somebody up with <laughs> I a wonder why. strikes. <laughs> Been there before. Yeah. Get reminded of it constantly. For sure. Anyway, uh, I also milk cows. Uh, so I got... Farmer Fife. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Plays into it. So yeah, I did that circle. for about a year and a half uh, before I went to so college. So you... You milked cows longer. Not cookies. <laughs> you know, you milked cows longer than you wash dishes. Yeah. <laughs> this is correct, yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. There's more money in uh, milking cows than there is in dishwashing. All right. Cool. Makes sense. Chris, do you want to go next? Yeah. So I got my first job uh, delivering newspapers, actually. Oh, to... yeah. I deliver newspapers, too. Sorry. No, 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 no. No, your time's yeah. over. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Bought well, me a PS2 I... once. I'll tell you that. What was the, what was the newspaper? Uh, it was called the Era Banner. Uh, the uh, the local paper in Aurora, and it was three days a week. Uh, Thursday paper, tons of flyers. I was a a bitch to put together, but yeah. uh, you yeah. know it is what it is. Got to get that slave right, labor as a like, great seven like, kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, I also did some babysitting, uh, and I I worked at uh, Canada's Wonderland for uh, five summers. I think it was. Thank so. you for those free tickets. Oh, yeah, no problem. What, what <laughs> ride did you manage? I did not work at uh, rides. I worked in the admissions department. So you're one of those guys that you just see, like, you know, just scanning. Because I no. can picture you as a person who's, like, standing at one of those games. Like, Come over here. Win the no. five-pound bear no. that's sitting that's, up here. That's games, not admissions. I know. <laughs> but I felt as though you'd be a games guy. No, no, no. Admissions. So ticket tagging, selling tickets, uh, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll talk about myself, I suppose, now before we talk on Santa's <laughs> jobs before he became. Uh, Did Santa. you realize that Santa had jobs before he was Santa? Yeah, well, this is <laughs> unbelievable. This is, a, this is a first. So uh, for myself, again, um, I did some of the newspaper helping with my brother's road. I never did that myself. Right. Um, I worked at uh, one of my family members' uh, trophy shops, actually, and put together some trophies and, and did that whole thing. So the engraving and uh, construction of trophy making. He just really. needed a trophy for himself. Yeah, well, it's. It's nice when it's accessible. Um, <laughs> I also worked in uh, a landfill, actually, to pay for uh, my lacrosse equipment. So I wanted to do lacrosse, play lacrosse, so I worked in a landfill to, to do that. Um, interesting enough, I felt like it was wrong to leave my garbage there. So I brought it home to my own municipality, because there's a municipality outside of my own. Took my <laughs> own garbage home with me and put it in my own landfill. And how was your lac- lacrosse career turning out? It, it was great. I had a good time. Snapped my... Uh, clavicle on um, the left clavicle and uh <laughs> then i went and actually started baseball in cereals that's where i met you so i guess you could say it was the worst decision of my life <laughs> <laughs> should have stuck to lacrosse <laughs> <laughs> that's how that comes and then i did the, the whole dishwashing thing so i worked at a, a diner in in stratford and then uh i got recruited by family friends at another restaurant and did the dishwashing there before what, I what, was, what was that, that so you, good at it you called it uh ceramic sanitation yeah, so i was engineer? a ceramic sanitation engineer for yeah. that so <laughs> Um, I did umpire as well, but I've never had the opportunity to strike anybody out on two strikes like you did, Fife. Because uh, so, I would always do the plate and you'd always do the bases. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was the more intelligent one. Because <laughs> I wasn't going to ruin <laughs> But my I made more cat. money. <laughs> yeah, five bucks extra. <laughs> yes. Um, now for Santa Claus. So I'm sure you saw the old... Um, uh, TV special about old St. Nick and what he did prior to Santa Claus. Um, right. We're here to tell you that that was absolute lies. Incorrect. Um, mm-hmm. And so Santa Claus did have some jobs as well. One of them was umpiring. Mm-hmm. Now, we do see with the toy making uh, where he is now, he did work at Home Hardware Lumberyard um, when he was younger. So there is a big connection there. There you go. Which really got us start into being old St. Nick. Um Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, if you ever guys want to know where the ho 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 came from, it was actually strike one, strike two, strike three. Yes, that, oh, the original, there you go. The original yeah. ho ho ho. That that is great. Um, so it's just interesting to see kind of the progression of of old Saint Nick and. Um, we talk about these jobs and these occupations when we were younger. I started when I was 14. Labor laws were a little bit different. Um, Santa Claus saw an opportunity and uh, did the same thing with the elves. Yes. So, again, based on where his carrier and his roaming charges were for his phone, the labor laws are much different. I'm actually interested in what the reindeers make. 
Well, they or the elves too. They don't make anything. They Nothing. just get a couple carrots. And now that they realize that we've brought in six new el- uh, reindeers based off of our flavor profile, right. I feel like the traditional ones might be putting up. <laughs> Hopefully, a, they don't unionize. I was just going to say, it might be putting a union for it. So, <laughs> He's screwed. Yeah. So uh, I guess we should probably move on. And we know that this is our last main episode of 2021. So it is. Um, we've got four bulleted points here, uh, Chris, to kind of talk about the podcast for 2021, where we're at. We want to give thanks to everybody who's who's listened who's shared stuff on instagram who's posted stuff who's reached out communicated our followers are fantastic we have i would say one of the greatest craft beer uh followings in ontario and we thank you guys for that with that being said we got some statistics that we want to throw at you because uh chris worked in emissions at canis one <laughs> so chris uh what do you got you want to give us one i'll do the second one uh, Fife, you could do the third and fourth. How about that? Sounds good. Yeah, I would say we don't only have the the best craft beer podcast listeners, but the best craft beer podcast in Ontario. Uh, if I'm, you know, being humble honest. brag. Yeah. Uh, so eighty eight percent of our listeners are from Canada, which so does make sense. It, it it makes a lot of sense, but we've seen quite a few. Uh, Listeners from the U.S. especially, uh, Mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, maybe some other countries. Yeah. So taking off of that, um, our listeners are actually from 31 different countries. So that to me, when I saw this and I went through and I was like, oh, let's see where our listenership's from. 31 different countries. pretty crazy. Listen to Mm -hmm. our voices on whatever device that they listen to. What what else did, like, they had nothing else going on. They had to listen to us. That's true. And the beers that they might not actually ever have. Right. But you know what? Yeah. We commend you for listening, and we appreciate that. Brett, hit us with uh, the last yes. two. And so we'll, we'll 39% of people listen through Apple Podcasts, yeah. uh, which is kind of funny because I do not. Uh, Neither do I. <laughs> but anyway. And then for some random reason, and I have no idea why this is, the most listened day or time other than days that we release, which is Thursdays, is Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Yeah. I think they're getting prepared for the next episode Maybe. the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, you know, you're like half day through the work week or half <laughs> way <laughs> through the work week. Like, man, I really want to hear Tyler's voice on Wednesday at 9 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds they, all right. You know what they say? Hump day, baby. <laughs> All right. So again, thank you everybody for listening, engaging with us. We try to be as active as possible on social media. Um, a, a shout out to all of our producers that help out with that as well. Um, we couldn't do it without you guys. And so thank you. Happy holidays. And we will be right back with our goodbyes. All right, so that's all for today's episode, our last episode before Christmas, and our last main episode before the new year. Yeah, so thank you again for listening. Keep on listening every other Thursday as Craft Beer Connoisseurs releases a new episode and on our off Thursdays for a producer special. And of course, happy holidays, a happy new year, and make sure to tell your friends, family, and your favorite reindeer. Yeah, so I'll echo that. Happy holidays from all of us and producer Santa. I'm Tyler. I'm Brett. And I'm Chris, and together, we're the Craft Beer Connoisseurs. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho!